Did you know the Soviet Union had a space shuttle? It did, and that's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. NASA's own decision to build the space shuttle came mostly down to money. At the end of the 1960s, when the Apollo program was just getting ready and gearing up to land on the moon, the funds for NASA were already starting to shrink. Looking ahead, it was just too expensive to maintain the launch technology of the Saturn V and the Apollo program. And so NASA looked at something reusable, the space shuttle that would glide to a runway landing and be refurbished between launches. Helping keep the cost of the shuttle low was the Department of Defense, who agreed to help NASA fund the program if the car Cargo bay would allow military satellites to be taken into orbit. That is why the shuttle's cargo bay is as big as it is, because the DoD set those requirements. When the Soviet Union learned that NASA was building such a massive reusable vehicle, it seemed a little bit suspicious to the Soviet military. The shuttle was designed to launch up to 50 times a year, and it could carry up to 30 tons into orbit in its payload bay. The shuttle could also return up to 15 tons of material from orbit, and also had a very long cross-range capability meaning it could circle the globe once and return to a runway landing on a western landing site as opposed to an eastern site being Cape Kennedy. The vehicle itself wasn't worrying, but this impressive payload capability was. What could the Americans need with so many launches and so much cargo space? Were they building something like a military outpost in orbit or putting up a giant weapon? Unsure of what the Americans were planning, the Soviet Union decided to react in kind by building its own reusable space shuttle. And not to be outdone by the American capability, it seemed a safe bet to the Soviets to basically copy the dimensions of the American shuttle. After studying a few configurations, the Soviet design bureau behind the space shuttle ultimately decided to keep it very close to the American design. The winged orbiter would ride one large external tank into orbit, and that tank in turn would be assisted by four external boosters. Not quite the same as the American shuttle, but pretty similar. And like the American shuttle, it was designed to fly missions as short as one day or as long as 30 days. But unlike the American version, the Soviet shuttle wasn't designed to replace all manned launch capabilities. Instead, the Soviet shuttle would just add another to the growing list of Soviet programs. By that time, that included the Soyuz program, the Salyut program, and the Mir space station program. Existence of the Soviet shuttle was only confirmed in 1987, and it was said to be named Buran, which means snow on the steps. And the Buran shuttle only launched once, in November of 1988. It was a simple shakedown cruise designed to prove that the technology was sound. The mission launched, orbited the Earth twice, and returned to a runway landing completely on autonomous control. Buran's single flight might have been a success, but the program on the whole could not survive the fall of communism. In 1992, the separate design bureaus that had collectively made up the Soviet space power were brought together under one umbrella, the Russian Federal Space Agency. Under this new agency, the Buran program had no home. It was never formally cancelled, but it also never left the ground again. Five orbiters were built as part of the program. The flown Buran and four more in various states of completion have all been left to languish in hangars. Recently, Russian photographer Ralph Marebs posted a phenomenal album on his live journal page. It shows one of the unflown orbiters and one of the unused test articles languishing in a hangar at Baikonur. The images are absolutely stunning, so be sure to check out his entire album, which is linked below. And I also put together some of the images in a gallery, along with an article explaining a little bit more detail about the Barom program on my blog, Vintage Space, over at PopSci, so check that out as well. So how many of you have actually heard of Buran, and what else do you want to know about this Soviet space shuttle that sort of was, but kind of wasn't? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to leave any questions and ideas for future episodes in the comments as well. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for daily vintage space content, and with new episodes going up every single Tuesday and Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.